What lessons can IT leaders learn about IoT from the healthcare industry? Join me and my guest Preston Duran of Fortified Health Security on this episode of Between Two Servers. Welcome to Between Two Servers, the video series designed specifically for IT leaders. I'm Don Pazette, and we know your time is valuable and in short supply, so let's get right to it with my guest today, Preston Duran. Preston is from Fortified Health Security, a firm that specializes in healthcare cybersecurity. The healthcare industry has been dealing with IoT for far longer than most other industries, so let's learn from that experience today. My first question, Preston, what is IOMT and what are the benefits to a healthcare system? Thank you. Uh, it's great to be here. So, really, if, when we're defining IOMT or connected medical devices, um, it's really an ecosystem of networked medical devices and software applications. And we can kind of break these down into three categories. We have the, the wearable category, where you're thinking things like Fitbit, insulin pumps, and even tracking bracelets for babies. We have the internal category of things like pacemakers, and then we have the stationary devices, things like hospital beds and patient monitoring systems. All right, now you mentioned like uh, a Fitbit, right? And I felt comfortable there, I felt warm and fuzzy. You mentioned like monitoring devices on a, on a gurney, that, that's a little more critical. Then you mentioned pacemakers, that's really critical stuff. That's where I start to get nervous. So what are some of the things, or what, what are some of the risks that hospitals are facing with this type of equipment? Well, really, you know, as we transition from the, the, the old style of, of medical devices to these networked medical devices, what we're doing is we're increasing the attack surface, but then we're not being put in a position to where we really own or manage the security of those devices. And that makes things tricky. So, you know, you, you have to think that when we think of information security, a lot of people think of the CIA triad, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. In healthcare, availability by far is the most important thing. The, the systems have to be up to deliver services to patients. So when you approach security from an availability first perspective, it's sometimes a little bit challenging to secure them as well. So, you know, we, we increase the attack surface. Um, we understand that availability is the most important. And then also these devices oftentimes aren't considered IT devices. They're not managed or inventoried by IT. They're controlled by either a, a biomed department or a facilities department. So we have to understand how to work with them to be able to manage these devices and secure them. All right, so that sounds like a pretty high degree of risk. So obviously it's something we wanna be aware of, we wanna take action on. What are some of the things that hospitals are doing to help mitigate that risk? You know, I think, you know, one of the most important things is to really first understand the risk. So before you uh, approach a risk management strategy, you have to first understand the risk. So doing risk assessments and, and getting inventory and scanning for vulnerabilities and really understanding where you are and then creating risk management plans um, to deal with that risk. You know, uh, one of the great examples of it is, is segmentation. So creating a baseline for your network and saying, here's kind of uh, what we expect for the machines on our network to have these security technologies or certain patch levels. And then anything that falls outside of that baseline should be segmented off and only given access to what it needs. Now, I know a lot of hospitals are, are not they're not jumping at the bit to get the latest cutting edge technology. Usually they're focused on making sure the technology is tried and true, tested, you know, been through FDA approval and all the various things that they need. But we can't ignore this new technology for long. Patients want it, doctors want it to be able to treat people. So if, if I'm taking over as the, the IT person for a hospital, what's some advice that you'd give to me to make, to make it a little more palatable to adopt IoT devices in the network? Well, I mean, I think that the, the easiest thing is to gain re close relationships um, with the other departments, with the departments that are going to manage it. Um, while it does introduce risk, the benefits uh, are, are extreme. You know, it really, IOMT transformed the way that we deliver care. Um, from you know decreasing costs to to improving patient outcomes, so the 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 need for these devices is not going away, and it's only going to get bigger. Right now, there's an average of between six to ten IPs or IOMT devices per patient room. So knowing that going in, we need to understand our risk management strategy and tailor it to these devices so that we can decrease that risk. 
Wow, and, and that number is probably just going to go up as more things advance, more technologies come out. And, and you know, I know that your focus is in the medical world, and, and you guys deal with hospitals pretty frequently or constantly. Well, it seems like a lot of these concerns are starting to expand out into the non-medical industry. You know, when we talk about PII, hospitals have personally identifiable information. You, you have all these medical records on patients, so it's first and foremost in your thought. Other companies are starting to look at that more and more now. So. Do you have any, any suggestions or recommendations for non-hospitals, just for, for regular organizations? Absolutely. You know, I think that, you know, to begin with, you know, kind of going back to the segmentation piece and really the, and the procurement piece, right? So who owns the devices? And then, you know, what are, what are your expectations for the security level of these devices? Working with the vendor, understanding vulnerabilities, things like that. And then if they can't meet that, because of legitimate business reasons, then finding ways to segment it from the other parts of your network. I, again, I, th I think it really goes back to, you know, segmenting these devices, allowing them to deliver the care that, that they need to deliver, um, but keeping them from communicating with other parts of the network that they don't need to communicate with. You know, you mentioned sourcing there, and I think about like the supply chain, a lot of these IoT devices that they might be developed by US companies or developed overseas in foreign countries. For hospitals, is that a big concern, you know, the, the, the country of origin for these devices? You know, I, I don't think it's a huge concern at the moment. I mean, if you if you look at it, the, the people that are doing the procurement are usually the biomed departments and, and they're not the IT departments. But even if they are, all the machines that we order, whether it's your, your laptop or your desktop, those parts are sourced and most of the time built off, you know, offshore. All right, folks, that's all the time we have. We try to keep these episodes short because your time is precious. You can find more details about Preston and Fortified Health Security in the YouTube description or in the LinkedIn post, so be sure to check that out. Thanks to my guest today, Preston Duran. For now, I'm Don Pazette, and this was Between Two Servers.